we have three new derivatives to add to our toolbox. Really, it's six if you consider all the inverse trig functions, but I would say you only really need to set three to memory for constant use. The other three we can always look up. But we have the derivative of arcsine, or sine inverse of x, is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. The derivative of arc cosine of x, or inverse cosine of x, is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And the derivative of arctan of x, or tan inverse of x, is 1 over the quantity 1 plus x squared. And that pretty much rounds out our toolbox of derivatives. Well, let's not take these derivatives on faith. Let's prove them. Starting with the first one, the derivative of arc sine of x. Okay, so the claim is that the derivative of arc sine of x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. These proofs aren't just me going off into theory land to try to justify a result for the course. These are proofs that students should be able to do because if nothing else, they're fun. And they also show a deeper understanding of trigonometry. So let's set about proving this thing. Here's how you do these inverse trig proofs. You start out by saying, okay, y, let's let, so I guess we could say let y be arc sine of x. Okay, so inverse sine of x. Well, that tells us that sine y then must equal x. And let me just say one thing up here. The range of arc sine of x is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So I'm just going to say that about y because it'll, be, it'll come in useful later. Um, negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to pi over 2. When you do these proofs, I'm not as concerned about this aspect of it, but I want to be really careful with the domains and ranges the first time, just demonstrating for you how it goes. Um, but I'm not as concerned about the domain and range arguments when you do your own proofs. Okay, so we're down to sine y equals x. Now let's take the derivative of both sides. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. Well, the derivative of sine is cosine, so we have cos y well, times y prime, that's the chain rule because we're doing implicit differentiation here because we're taking the derivative with respect to x equals 1. And right, and we're going right towards it here. We solve for y prime is 1 over cos y. Okay, so we're getting closer. We have cos y, but we want square root of 1 minus x squared. Well, let's remember the Pythagorean identity, which tells us that Let's go over here with it. Cos squared y plus sine squared y equals 1. So we can solve this for cos. y then is square root of 1 minus sine squared y. And actually it's plus or minus square root. But let's go back up here. When I restricted y to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, in that y for cos of y, if you recall what cosine looks like, cos is always positive in that range, right? Let's just do a quick drawing of cosine, right? Remember, it looks something like this, at least in that first little bit. So here's negative pi over 2, and here's pi over 2. Notice that cosine is positive. Cosine, we'll call it y. If we're calling this the y-axis, it's kind of confusing, but cos of y is positive in that range, so I'm only going to take the positive case. Okay, so I made that argument there that one time, so you don't have to. When you go to do these proofs, I'm fine if you just take the positive square root, personally. Okay, so back to our proof. We have y prime equals, all right, we decided that cos y was the square root of 1 minus sine squared y, but what is sine y? Recall up here we decided that sine y was actually x, right? We're letting x be sine y. So then we can plug x in down here. Every time we see sine y, we replace it with x. That gives us our final result of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, which completes the proof. So, in addition to being illuminating, these proofs are really kind of fun. 
They're so fun, in fact, that I don't want to rob you of the thrill of discovering the proof of cosine, arc cosine, that is, on your own. So I'll leave that one to you. You'll find that the proof very closely follows this proof we did for arc sine.